All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. It is your bi weekly horror hotfix brought to you by GDQ. Uh, I'm your host, Dicis, and uh, we're going to be getting into some fun stuff tonight. Uh, before we do begin, though, I do just want to say that I hope, you, one, that you're all having a wonderful day, and two, uh, that AGDQ 2023 pri online prize submissions are now open until December 30th. Uh, if you'd like to do that, go to gamesdonequick.com for more info. Anyway, it has been a wild year, and we are approaching the end of it. I believe we only have about maybe uh, two more uh, shows for the entire year here. So I thought uh, for one of the two, I would like to kind of revisit what this year is all about, which is we have a lot of games, a lot of horror games as well. Uh, today's show is going to be a collection of horror games that I personally enjoyed throughout the year. I thought were interesting and some interesting runs as well. Uh, they're all going to be pretty exciting, so I do hope that you enjoy them. And the first one's probably going to be one of my games of the year. Uh, we're going to be going into Signalis by Lightning. So feel free to take that away. Yo, what up? My name's Light, but you can call me Lightning too. Uh, I've been speedrunning since like Portal 1 came out, but I started speedrunning on Twitch in like 2013. I haven't streamed in a few years, so this is my first time live in like three or four years. Um, I have my commentator RJ with me to yell at me if I make any wrong turns. This is a pretty new game. <laughs> What's up, RJ? Hello, I'm RJ. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm ready to go. I'm going to count us down. It's going to be three, two, one, go. So first thing that's going to happen is we're going to do a little cutscene skip. Got a little cutscene skip uh, skill check. Basically, you just like hold right click, but you can hold it a little bit early um, as like the black loading screen is up. Yeah, there'll be uh, a lot of little skill or uh, little cutscene skips that we're going to be doing and surprisingly they have sort of different timings for a lot of them to get going but a lot of them you can start doing before you can see the bar yeah you just kind of like feel it out basically um, for the first part of this run you're just kind of focusing on your movement you're looking at these red lines on the ground and then later in the game the, the uh, white lines and you're waiting to do your input to enter the door right before the red line. Um, if you do it too early, you'll get locked out of like entering a door for a little bit. Like you saw earlier, it kind of took me a second to get up the ladder. That's because I spammed a little early. Nice. And uh, first section, you know, a little like get used to the movement, the environment kind of thing, going through doors and whatnot. Like you said, you get locked out if you click a little early. And like a lot of survival horror games of old, there's items you'll pick up you want to combine together. We'll just try to do anything involving the menu. We'll try to do as much at one time as possible. Um, something that's interesting already is that there's a nice blend of kind of like this three uh, top-down 3D-looking graphics versus a first person view and then some cutscenes from different angles of the top down third person so this game has a really interesting art style i think yeah the pixel art kind of like works really well in its favor um what's funny is this game has a settings or in the settings rather uh, for the display, it has like a pixel perfect mode. So like if you're playing on weird resolutions, they're like, hey, we want you to play in a proper aspect so you can stretch the game to like fit your aspect ratio and get perfect pixels. Um, which, you know, a lot of like retro people are super into. So they're big fans of retro games, I think. And what's cool about this game, um, You'll see a lot of words. There's a lot of words in German, a lot of words, I think, it, is it Japanese or Chinese? The symbols. Uh, I think this game has a lot of Chinese, right? Yeah, I think it's Chinese. And uh, so it's pretty cool. It's like a multilingual blending of this world, this future world, who, who knows when. So it's kind of nice to see those elements all blended together to make this the lore of this game as you read through documents and whatnot, which the game itself is uh, kind of, ba the horror at least is based around like Lovecrafty and Eldritch Horror ideas and themes. 
Yeah, this is like a lot of environmental like storytelling too. Like the cutscenes are pretty minimal. Uh, you're mostly learning about the world through your own like, I want to go read this. I want to figure this out. Here we go. Yeah, I would say that first part that you just did is really like the introduction to the run. This is like the first section where we actually will pick items up and when and how we pick them up and where we go actually starts to matter. Yeah, I'm going to be spamming the F key and my mouse one everywhere. So you notice every time he goes through a door, it is timed so you can hit it as soon as possible and get the best line through the door, but not too soon where he gets locked out and not too late where he wastes a little bit of time. It's actually a lot of tech trying to go through the doors. Here's Here everybody's goes our, like, favorite puzzle. Yeah, our first like real puzzle of the game. Three, lock two, three. Yeah. I didn't actually see what the last one was. I was like kind of focused on the first three. So I just took a guess yeah. at the last one. And I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to cut you off. I was I started talking. I was like, "Oh yeah, you said you wanted to like pay attention." <laughs> but that key that puzzle's a little interesting. It's random every single time. So uh light opts to go for like a a single press to see where the keys are and then adjust them that way, but it is possible to adjust them without actually looking. Like you can tell where they start and there's like a common middle point where it switches to being switches from being adjusted down to being adjusted up. It's a little hard to eyeball at first, but with some practices you can start to get them down. Hey look, our first enemy. It didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no lunge, nothing. So as a, a quick question for uh, a lot of the viewers who may not have played this game just yet, uh, so why is the category called casual memory? Uh, so, we, when we were doing the the game, there the game actually has four different endings that you can achieve. Uh, three of the endings are based on how you play the game throughout your playthrough, uh, with a number of factors that have been data mined out that would be a lot to get into. And then there's a secret ending that's completely different and has different requirements. But so the any percent or like the most minimalistic run to go through the game is the memory ending like if you just do this run straight through as fast as you can without deviating and killing as little things as possible you'll get the memory ending every single time and then casual is just the difficulty we play on did we mention the turnarounds rj Oh, no, not yet. We haven't mentioned the door wiggle. So right here, you'll notice that when Light unlocks the door, he'll turn around real quick and then go back towards the door. That's because also when you unlock a door, you also get locked out for a few seconds. But turning her, I think it's just kind of getting her away from the the input of being able to use the door and then turning her back into it completely makes it uh, available for her to use right away again. So you'll see him on any door that's either unlocked with a key or just unlocked from the right side. He'll do this kind of step back wiggle. Yeah, you're essentially like just, walking out of the trigger area. Like the ideal way to do it is to unlock it. Uh, to unlock mm -hmm. it like a millimeter away from the trigger point so that when you walk away and walk back in, like you you exit the trigger zone and enter it right again, like right away. If you're like super close when you do it, you kind of have to walk away a little bit further. And it's kind of, oh, it's a it. significant difference. It doesn't feel like it might be, but it, it saves a lot of time throughout the run. Yeah. This is our first example of strafe walking. You just hold like your left strafe here and hold forward at the same time. And you'll actually hear Elster's footsteps occurring more frequently. That's how you know you're moving faster, funnily enough. And we also get introduced to one of the game's uh, puzzle mechanics or information mechanics in the receiver, uh, where you can adjust these signals as you run. If you set your set, yeah, switch your settings to quick radio, you can turn it on and off without going in the menu and switch the um, frequencies Three, seven, with four, six, eight. buttons. So... You don't have to go in and waste time. You can do it while you're on the run. So you'll see that a, a couple times throughout the run. 
And we also, so to get this password, there is a paper in another room uh, that we don't get anymore. We used to get, but then we realized it kind of, there's two passwords that we need to get from the weightier frequency pretty early here. And we realized that they kind of all fall within the same range. The first one that he just got for the tree key could actually take is a little hard because you have a lot less time to figure it out before you get to the safe. Normally it's not an issue, but the second one we have plenty of time and and you'll see why here as we go into the safe or go into this elevator. Yes, and the safe codes are completely random every time, even if you get the same frequency. There it is. So here you go, yeah, just all the way up. That's actually a pretty far one. The frequency only goes up to 250. 486. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> that is HFFFR. That one you have to decode with a cipher. So I just have the written down on my notepad, and then I write down the number, write down the text, so I don't have to remember it. We used to actually do that cipher... Uh, a little bit later, like right before we use the uh, sword code. But um, now we're going to be doing a like blind walking trick. And uh, we don't have time to do the cipher anywhere else besides the elevator. Yeah, the game likes to lull you into a false sense of security by like, oh, I'll just pull the, the code right from the receiver. And then you come to the, the sword safe up here and it's the letters. And <laughs> right so you're like, ah, geez. So there is a piece of paper that tells you like, how to figure it out with like one blank number or one uh, yeah i think one blank spot that co coincides with the the number eight so the sword key will always have an eight somewhere in the password lightning flying through the pump puzzle here kind of reminiscent of re2 remake a little bit <laughs> uh same every time so just kind of blast right through that Here's our first key that we would normally pick up, but we're going to skip it for now because it's better for our inventory. You know, we only have six slots for inventory, so um, because we're going to come back down here, I'm going to get that key later when my inventory is a little bit more free. Yeah, this is after that first elevator we went through. This section is really the first example of inventory management in this game. Uh, obviously, you want to be boxing items and stuff as little as possible. So we have that kind of routed out just to the one singular box as we run past it on this first floor or on the in this uh not first floor this this section here and now we'll as light runs across back to the other side uh we'll get into this blind walk that he was talking about and a tech that's pretty prevalent throughout the run that we refer to as uh item buffering although technically the first one isn't really an item buffer just like a, a menu buffer <laughs> Yeah, it's like use item buffer or something. Yeah. So you'll see he's going in and out of the menu here. What he's doing is trying to... He starts with the menu open. He's going to close the menu, try to use the thing in front of him to open the menu again so that the thing he's using, item or this storage, will pop up over top of the uh, inventory. And what that allows him to do is actually walk back to the door... It'll be used for a different purpose in about, like, a minute. But for this one, we use it to walk back to the door. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but while that cutscene was happening, there was door triggers popping up. And he was running across the hall all the way to this room at the very end. So when he came back, he was already in here. So you could actually move while that train cutscene's loading up to get the gold key. From uh, what I can understand as well about that trick, uh, if I ended up missing it at all, the enemies here would just start beating on them during that cutscene, right? <laughs> yeah, you they can actually get stuck. While you, uh, while you pick up the key, that's the only time they can hit you. Otherwise, you get swung at, but Elster just kind of like moves and doesn't get hurt. But as soon as you start to trigger that like yes or no, pick up the key, they can hit you. And if they hit you like more than twice, I think you can get locked out. Uh -huh. And it will actually stop you from picking up the key, too. Yeah. That's the worst part. See, one of the blank key, one of the keys we get is blank. We have to make our own. Uh, you'll notice at this point we still have yet to pick up a gun. Uh, that theme will continue till almost the very end where we will play this game without a run. Because we have a tech coming up. We'll, we'll get into that. But 
For now, we're just running gunless. But yeah, you'll see a lot more of that item buffering tech. I might have done that wrong. I'll watch it. If I did it wrong, I need to put that left one down one more. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That one's a little odd because a lot of I think most runners probably do it by listening to the the clicks, and if you're just like miss one click, it throws you off completely. But the uh, answer to that puzzle is always the same. I think the the only three RNG puzzles we've already gone through them: the the lock pick and the two signals. Everything else, we kind of know what the answer will be. So here's the storage. But this time, what he's going to do no. is stand. Oh, he got pushed out. That's okay. We'll have more opportunity to show it off. But what was supposed to happen there is. Um, Light would get, he would be able to stop his movement into the next room with the menu buffer and stand in the door. And when this game, when you get pushed out of bounds in this game, this game actually very smartly has points that just put you back in bounds no matter how you get out. And uh, I'll, there's a few places throughout the run where it's actually beneficial to do that. It'll warp you across the entire, the entire room to the other side. Yeah, thankfully they're not like a big time loss or gain, so missing one or two is not like the biggest deal. Yeah, we've actually been going through and timing them out and they look like they would save so much time, but when you get down to when you get down to really breaking it down by time, it's like I don't think there's any that's more than like a few seconds of time save if you do it perfectly. Finally grabbing our water key. I got hit like right like a couple frames before I went through the door. I swear <laughs> there's like some kind of soft lock potential there. I like when you do the push animation, get hit, and go through the door at the same time. Yeah, that's the best. It breaks my brain. I don't understand what's happening there. She just like pushes in the wrong direction, still gets hit, and then you'll, you'll go through the door without moving. <laughs> Here we go, our last key and buffer for this floor. Nice door. You just got to back out of first person, go to the door. There we go. Stays behind the door, can't move, so the game's like, okay, we'll just put you at this door, at the other side. And with that last key, we get to go to the door and uh, leave the area and see our, ga our game's first boss. And you'll get to see how we deal with the boss without a gun. Yeah, this boss, uh, I have a specific setup for, I'm gonna like hold up and left and then hold up and right as soon as the cutscene is ending. Um, and I'm going to hopefully run into Miner. She's going to kind of like go back a little bit and I'm going to spam my Thermite. Ah, uh, That's okay. So what was supposed to happen is I, I spammed my Thermite there, but I was kind of like off angle there. So I kind of was like off to her down right side. But that's there the backup right there. I'm glad you can manage to do that because I literally just cannot ever get it to go after messing it up once. But yeah, you kind of have to walk through her AOE, like her puke, and uh, early on. And then when she starts standing up, you have to start spamming it again because she'll, she'll get knocked really quickly after she's gone down the first time. Yeah, and oh, the old strat for this, before we figured out that thermites are just busted, uh, we used to pick up the shotgun, and if you run into Miner, and hence what's happening while we do this, if you don't get the timing right with the thermite, uh, Miner actually goes down right away, and that's the only time you can hit her is when her face shield opens up. So we used to do that, just spam shotgun shots at, at her. But now we just kind of jam a thermite in there and hope it works out. And there is, so there is a quick kill version where when you get it just right, uh, you'll put the thermite down and the fight will end immediately. Uh, but fortunately, you don't need to get it that way. You can get it, I'll say the slower way, but it works about, it's almost exactly the same speed as using the shotgun during the fight, probably even a little faster. Yeah, the reason why sometimes it quick kills and sometimes it doesn't is based on like uh, how long you wait before you do the thermite. If you wait long enough, um, she'll start to like go down, but you'll still get the thermite off. And because I guess because she's opening her helmet, like it insta kills her. That's my guess, at least. But if you do it too early, then she just you see what happened there. Like um, she just kind of sits there burning for a bit. I guess I'm gonna come back and do that on the the reentry. 
Yeah, lots of opportunities. So this this whole area pretty recently went through a whole Riyadh. If you're familiar with the game, a uh, big mechanic of this section of the game is not it's not even like a huge part of the floor but part of the mechanics of this floor is based around getting a flashlight and being able to see in dark rooms uh but we found a way where we don't actually need that flashlight right away uh and it involves our favorite weapon the thermites <laughs> so we'll, we'll be using thermites for basically everything but we'll go over that a little more how we how we get through that once we're in one of those dark rooms because right now on this floor there's a uh, fuse that starts this elevator system between six floors six, seven, and eight that we need to start before we can really do anything else. Uh, if yeah, you... sorry, go, yeah, ahead. go for it. I was okay, just going to say, uh... like, you just get the fuse and then beeline back to the place that you came from. So it's kind of annoying that you have to backtrack immediately after entering here. Like, it would be awesome if we had like a fuse skip kind of thing going on. That would save a lot of time, but uh... it would. Yeah. But yeah, this is the only time we'll come back to five. So once we're done with this, um, go right back down to seven and start using those elevators that we activated. Also, this is a banger track. It's called Riot Control, if you want to look it up. The music for this game is super good. Like, it, it does atmospheric music really well. But here we go. Here's our first instance. Uh, for some reason, it was discovered if you use a thermite on an enemy near one of the doors that need to be illuminated, it counts as being illuminated, and you can go through without the flashlight. So, oh, look at this. <laughs> hey, look, there's the glitched uh, glitched monster. For some reason, it just shows up in that room. It could show up in this room. <laughs> Who knows why, but it, it does happen. Yeah, it's been happening a lot more frequently since we've been doing this strat, actually. <laughs> Just the routing. Mm hmm So again, you know, classic survival horror, things were running past uh, certain items that we might need at some point, but choosing to pick them up at a more favorable time when we're either going to use them right away or when we know we're going to be able to box them. Uh, this one, we actually don't... This floor also doesn't need a box stop at, at all anymore. Thanks to uh, thermites. Sturb. There you go. These are the the colibris. The first time we'll see them, uh, kind of makes the screen go a little wacky because they're based on like these signals. They communicate to each other with uh, signal wavelengths and whatnot. And um, what it does is it projects itself with three clones, and how uh, the game wants you to get rid of them is by adjusting the radio to the signals it tells you, and eventually they'll die. Or you can adjust it and find out which one's the right one and shoot it. Uh, but it's much faster to just run through there and deal with the eye pain. Okay, don't forget to go in this room this time. My last time to go in here. So you'll notice that uh, Lightning was adjusting his radio again. We need to adjust to a signal... Um, for one of the, the items on floor eight. So just getting it ready in advance because a happy accident of finding the Calibri, it'll put your radio on right away or automatically when you enter the room, no matter what. So just a free save, save input <laughs> to get the radio going. Hey, no hit. Nice. Always get a hit there. You just never know where it's going to be, but it's always almost always in a bad spot. Because technically, so like if you go in there, you know there's an enemy standing there already, but one of those monsters that crawls out of the floor actually comes out and gets to you before that monster, and that's the one the thermite goes in. So there's still a second enemy, like, what about me standing there <laughs> waiting for you to come back? Nice, good lineup. Sometimes, like, these enemies, depending on how fast you're going or where you're at, uh, could just be standing in front of the doors that you go through or come out and... There isn't really much you could do about it except just take the hit. Or yeah, and I have survival uh, habits where I just shove everything too, which is kind of slower in this in this category. Yeah, if you don't need to shove things, obviously you don't want to be doing it, but then it becomes like, uh, do I need this damage right now? Or am I piling it on too much? So who knows? Yeah, Because obviously healing is also slow. That's like the main difference kind of thing. 
between this and uh, survival is that you take three hits in survival and you're pretty much dead. It is pretty brutal since the contact damage counts as like a normal hit. Yeah. But that's why the faster of all of the runs is on casual. Because you can take quite a beating before you even have to be remotely concerned about it. Yeah, even and hey, during look, that here's minor the flashlight. Fight, I didn't need to heal. Hey, we should get that. Eh, maybe on the way back. But here, here's another fun uh, skip for the whole section. Usually what you would need to do is get a uh, key for the library, get the... Or you get the post box key, which we don't need to go in that room at all anymore. Look at that. Uh, go up to the post box, get the library key, go down and get the library, get the library key, get the astrolabe, go back up and twist it and do that safe combo to get that password. It's about like two, two and a half minutes of time. But for some reason, if you just like line your mouse up nicely on like the edge of the door on the outside of that safe, you could just grab the administrator key through the safe without doing the puzzle. Yeah, that might be something the super skip simple, in the game. but saves a ton of time. Yeah, it's, we call it stealing the admin key. <laughs> Shouldn't have left that crevice in the side of the safe. Yeah. <laughs> now we're done with that section. We finally made it to the mines, which is kind of like a big early thing in the game. Like all of the, it's like all oh, the workers are in the mines, so you're trying to get to the mines to see. If, we could find this person that we're here. We're looking for Elster, our character. I don't even know if we talked about who she is, is a replica kind of like Android uh, looking for somebody at the beginning of the game. It starts out as Alina Sayo and then uh, kind of devolves into whatever the madness of this game really is. And today I found out that Elster's name means magpie in German. Yep. All of the replica names for are there's a bunch of different replicas they all have uh names in german that refer to some sort of bird uh why is it in german it's in german because uh the creators are german the developers are from germany but yeah so all of the replicas have a german name for a bird of some kind Ow. That guy is so annoying. <laughs> yeah, I tried to be cheeky and cut it, like, really <laughs> close. That's my fault. In survival, I swear, there's, like, literally only one line you can take, and you maybe don't get hit. It's really <laughs> annoying. Because uh, another difference between this and survival is in this, uh, the, the, the units move a lot slower when they're, like, in their fast aggro state. They're not actually fast. Like, if you look, like, they're, ch they're chasing me, but they're not coming up that quickly. In survival, they would be on you, like, in a millisecond. Yeah, so we're just waiting out here, waiting for the door to fully open, and then you can jump down it. Yeah, I basically just sit in the bottom right, I bait down the enemies, run to the top left, bait out the enemies, and then run back. It's pretty simple. You're waiting for the miner to, like, pull her laser on you when you're on the bottom right, and then you know to run top left, and she'll the miner will just always stay there. Um, and going top left is good because there's heals there, and you typically need a heal after you're done with that uh, B5 through B8 floor that we, floors we were just on. But I only took two hits during that floor, and I also healed during the minor fight since I took extra damage there. So. And here's every runner's favorite section: a two-minute first-person cutscene that is completely not skippable. So, what Lightning's gonna do is show us a little trick where you just climb this mountain for whatever reason the game lets you do it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> steep enough. <laughs> and I'm just doing the strafe movement. It's probably faster. I don't know. It's not worth testing here. <laughs> Doesn't matter. A lot of these first person scenes are what I assume are memories for one person or another uh, based on the story. Yeah, without giving too much story spoiler, if there's like a bunch of notes on the beach, and if you read them, it's from a certain somebody in the game. And they're kind of crazy. <laughs> it's crazy text. Yeah, it's very... Uh, the, the writing in this game for all of the documents is honestly probably the best part of the world building. They do such a good job with their documents to say what the world is like in this future, and 
kind of build up to what the ending ends up being through the documents. Yeah, none of them are really long-winded. It's honestly such a well-done story in that it doesn't take long to like uh, just read it in general. But there's so much going on. Yay! And now two minutes are up. It's just enough time to show off the, the nice little trick and then be done with the cutscene so you don't have to think about it. That's kind of nice. I don't know if you need a quick bathroom break or need to grab a drink or something. You got two minutes. It's a lot of time. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I'm not even going to try again. You can clip through these cage doors. Um, you can clip through all of them in the game that exist with the uh, door code on it. Did I ever clip? Nope, I did not. But uh, only a couple see. of them are worth doing, which is that one and then the last one. So you see he has uh, the flashlight now. That room is a nightmare to try and get like a good setup where you can thermite. There's like six enemies in there and to thermite one of them and pick up the ring without getting blasted. So we kind of just decided that the three, like eight total seconds from getting the flashlight and needing it later is worth uh, not getting pummeled in that room trying to use a thermite or yeah. a flare or something. So you go another menu buffer. That one kind of puts you on the other side of all of the Calibri. Yeah, that's one that doesn't really save much time, but I also got that buffer pretty fast, so I don't believe it lost any time, that's for sure. Equipping the last thermite, we're going to use it on the cage boss that is right here, called Nue, or Nu. Um, I'm just going to run straight into it and spam my Seeky. And... Yep, <laughs> it's dead. There we go. Yeah, usually what we used to do is bring the flare gun and kind of just shoot it with four flares because that's also pretty fast as far... Not that fast, but it still worked really well. It would just take like, I don't know, I think like 15-ish seconds for Issa. We never met, we haven't met Issa yet, but there's been opportunities up to this point. Uh, it takes her... We just have to wait for her to stand up and then shoot the boss. But for some reason, sticking it with a thermite makes her stand immediately and then shoot the enemy. Here we go. This this menu buffer right here is kind of like the first one that kicked off the whole thing for us, like experimenting on what we can menu buffer and what we can't, and then finding these teleports and whatnot. But that one's significant in the sense that uh, we could go right in, grab the balance plate without having to go and get the wooden doll pieces that you need to balance out the scale and pick it up. It saves a good amount of time because it keeps us from having to box a second time in here. We have to box twice technically at this point and that warp is really worth it because you already have to buffer anyway so and here we go this is the wire maze um one of them there's two this one you can see pretty well in the dark um well yeah just to see be safe there i didn't want to take that extra hit so i just kind of yeah. took the little intended way out there You'll see lightning kind of just runs through some of the wire mazes. It, they do a lot of damage. Like, if anything was going to actually kill you, overdoing it on those wires would be something that would do it. Yeah, I had a little bit more damage than I'm used to having, so that's why I didn't take the one extra hit I would normally take. But now I'm full HP, so it doesn't matter. But doing that, those puzzles without the flashlight is also another contributing factor to not having to box as much in the run. We still, we could just dump the flashlight out and kind of round out everything we need to. Um, so here I'm going to take some intentional damage because I'm going to do something that also we just found out doesn't save time, but I want to show it off for the run in general. I'm going to take this hit, unlock the door, take this other hit. And then I'm going to do a buffer off of these healing patches down here, and I'm going to end up using them. So that's why I needed to take those hits. Otherwise, I'd be locked out of using the heals, and they would just be stuck in my inventory. And he also went and used the key there, because uh, we need an extra spot. 
um, before we leave here to go to that chest on our left to grab the plates that we kept in there. So look at this. Look super far. You'll see how big that room really is when you come back and you're like, wow, what a warp. But we actually timed it out and it really doesn't save any time due to having to unlock the, the keypad first. So if yeah. you, but I think you can actually clip through that door. It's a little risky with a soft locking, I think, but it is possible to do it without unlocking it. Yeah, because that menu buffer is like in your face when you go to that door. Um, if you had to try to clip through the door, like you wouldn't see where Elster is. So you kind of have to, you would require like a setup that you would have to do semi blind. So it's a little rough. So here we go. Second um, boxing trip of this section just to grab the plates the eternity plate that we got in like the very first section when we got the receiver and then the balance plate hey i got a door clip very nice taking a little extra damage there oops There we go. And you'll see that it just this, this spits you out through the gate. That one always spits you out, thankfully. I think this is this the first time you've actually been in like danger or caution where she was bleeding. I think it might be. But I'm trying to think. Once she does so. go into Every, that, yeah, I think it's the first time. Once she does go into that phase uh, and she bleeds, she'll actually regenerate a little bit of health back up to caution, or is she still in danger? Either way, uh, when she gets super danger. low, she regenerates at least a little bit of health, so you can continually take a few more health. Yeah, it's called, like, um, cheating death. It gives you, like, a little bit of your health back, and you can take another hit. Hey, here we go. Credits. GG. Oh, here we go. Credits. Yeah, GG. Don't, don't hit the timer. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it is a fake out ending. I, I, I kind of forgot somebody was timing. Because... <laughs> uh, Whoops, but here we go. Yeah, it's a fake out ending. If you go back to the menu, you can't do anything. You have to continue into this part. Can't load any saves or anything. Yeah, it's funny. I see a lot of Twitch channels that are saying like, oh, apparently the game didn't end. So <laughs> like probably one of their viewers is like, hey, you know, it didn't end right. And they come back the next day to finish it. What sucks is it doesn't save your game either. So if you do actually quit because you thought you finished, uh, yeah, you got to replay your last save. Oh man, I didn't know that at all. I'm pretty sure. Wait, I mean, it's not like this game has autosave, so. Right. Once we restart the uh, game, we're in this memory sequence of the Penrose 512, the ship we started on, but it looks a little more well put together. It's because it's kind of like a memory sequence of that. And all we have to do is go around and check some of the systems with Elster, and then you get to get into this room. It won't let you in before you check everything that you need to. But now we're back, I guess. <laughs> Whatever's going on this story, we're back with the Elster. Or who knows which amount of times. Yeah, or an Elster, or... As you get farther and farther into the game at this point, you, there starts to be like this theme of like looping time and repeating cycles of stuff. Yeah, you find remnants so you see, like, of Elster and stuff. Like that scene just there where our very hurt Elster at the end of the fake out ending, she makes it to what looks like a Penrose ship and tries to get in, but when she tries to open the latch for the Penrose, it kind of is too strong for her, I guess, and it, it destroys her a little bit. So she crawls into this other ship and then uses parts from a different Elster unit to put herself back together. And strafe walking here saves three seconds over just holding W. Absolutely zooming right now. So fast. <laughs> there, I got the early cutscene skip because I didn't go to the the mirror part of that cutscene. Here we go. Now we're back in this section. It'll look familiar to the beginning, maybe with slightly more bulbous blobs. Well, just blocked, a few. Yep. Yeah. The walls are definitely breathing right now. <laughs> Luckily for us, this safe is is the same safe from before. The password is exactly the same. 
Yeah, ever since like the uh, the station like went all crazy, they haven't really had maintenance workers ever come and fix that one. It, that's the default code. Oh, equip the flashlight. Unfortunately, need to use the flashlight one more time. It's another spot where it just doesn't really pay to bring a thermite to it, especially since we had to get the, uh, the flashlight earlier just for the one ring in nowhere. Hello, go in the hole. And we definitely tinkered with the idea of going, and you can definitely do it, go completely flashlightless throughout the whole run. And we, we just tinkered with it a little bit and just couldn't make it more efficient than just picking it up. Yeah, it's so fast just to pick stuff up. Especially if the box is like in your face. Yeah, I think between picking it up and then having to pull it back out of the safe is probably like, I don't know, eight total seconds maybe if you're slow with your menuing. So trying to get the serpent ring in that previous section with a thermite and not, not screwing it up is a lot less consistent. Yeah, the enemies are like beyond the ring too. They're not like in front of it or anything. They're not in a good position. Oh, nice. I just didn't want to take a hit. <laughs> it was definitely slower, but I didn't take a hit. This section is not super big, but the way we go through it is probably a little interesting. Um, we had an original route, but somebody found like kind of altering it a little bit and coming back to this section after grabbing a few items instead of continuing forward is actually a little faster. Um, so th this route, this er, section is actually pretty interestingly routed because it kind of lends itself to a natural circular route to just go in to do everything you need to do, but it isn't as fast as like doubling back for certain things now rather than later. Yeah, I did it a little too late. You can see Elster's hair like kind of popping out, so when the door closed, it just shoved her out. It <laughs> just spit her out. Yeah. So we grab that blue disc from the one room. We double back here. Here we go. Our first run, our gun of the entire run. We're gonna pick up the SMG, which we will use for the final boss. Not a moment sooner. But uh, this blue disc key, we have to kind of. You're supposed to triangulate these two satellites, but you only really need to do one as long as you know what you're doing. It's always on the same one. Uh, and what's interesting is those three signals, I forget what they were, but the one we need is magpie. Uh, if the signal is already set to magpie, which it can be, uh, you don't have to go in and push it. So it's kind of like a free little time save. The signal will be different right, right off the bat. You'll hear it. So you don't have to go in and change it. Yeah, that's why you keep the radio on it, so in case you can hear it on the magpie. Here we go, nice long teleport. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we used to run kind of all the way around up top uh, and get the lover card later. Now we get it, we get it first, that's the first one we get. Um, and then go down. Ends up saving like a, a handful of seconds. More SMG ammo. Here's a yeah. Here's a stir broom. This right here after the pillar. If you hold up and right, you'll dodge a second enemy. But I got hit early because I guess I didn't do the up and right early. Not really sure. Gonna put away everything except for the photo tank. I'm going to hold on to that till almost the end of this section. And that's the only time we'll need to box. Uh, you collect all these cards because you need that. Yeah, you collect all these cards because um, it just triggers the, the puzzle at the end. You don't have to actually use the cards to do any puzzles. But because we're getting so many, we have to get six. We have to put some away. Oops. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Get back in.
pretty slow and we know this warp isn't worth it but again i'm just doing a lot of these for marathon's sake just to show it off We go that whole triangulation we did was to get a, res a signal that'll open this box for us give us a key and another one of the tarot cards and now we're gonna go back you used to go through the left and run through well i used to go through that part a lot yeah, sooner then that got routed out and then it got routed out again <laughs> so we actually never go through that door that's locked yeah nice oh i slink through those nice and something Always about it just feels room. good when you go through the, the Calibri sections and don't get hit. I don't know. It just, like, feels nice. Nicer than every other part where you don't get hit. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just expecting Yeah, that must it. be it. You're just like, I'm definitely getting hit here, so... I'm going to grab this ammo here, too, because... Um, it'll let me max out my ammo capacity when I go into the last boss, boss fight. It's going to give me way more than I need, so it's going to leave some in the storage box when I take it out later. And here, if you hover your mouse over the, uh, the red lines there, you can actually use the item from your inventory to place it a little quicker. And we have one more tarot card to get. And this section is pretty interesting as well with the routing that we do, because as you pick up those tarot cards, um, more flesh blobs will start blocking your paths through uh, where you could go once you pick up the card. So you can't always double back or go through places that you've already been because of those flesh blobs. So we kind of make it so they're not even really a factor. Uh, R.I.P. A... Isa. <laughs> And that's a close-up on Erica. <laughs> Two characters you definitely know a lot about and have talked about a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Isa, our rifle friend, is looking for her her twin sister Erica, but uh, Isa succumbs to whatever is going on here in that cutscene. Hey, didn't bug out this time. All right, it is Falk time. This boss fight is pretty fun, actually. Even on casual, it's still super fun. I'm gonna grab these heals at the top just for safety. Pretty much guarantees I won't die in the fight. Um, they empty your inventory for you, so I have to pull these out. Clip the gun, and we're going down the long hallway. So I get to tell you about this quick kill that I'm hopefully going to get. Uh, you can hit Falk twice with these spears. Um, every time she goes down, you hit her with a spear, she gets back up, you hit her some more, she goes down, you hit her with a spear, repeat. But um, when she's coming back up after you hit her the first time, if a spear is right next to her, you can grab it and throw it into her again, so you can get what's called double hits. This and fight's aesthetically pretty cool, has lots of callbacks. This should be a nice setup for double hitting. There's one, nice. Uh, aesthetically cool callbacks to some other horror games. Very uh, Silent Hill 4, right? And uh, also reminds me of Parasite Eve a little bit. Just kind of with the bullet hell or uh, bullet heck elements of it. <laughs> yeah. But you see, lightning is kind of just blasting through these phases. This is actually going pretty well for what was de what was dealt. This is about as good as it gets without getting multiple double hits. I'm just going to heal, hopefully down her so she doesn't recall her spear. <laughs> it's unloading on her. <laughs> ah, she did call it back and I couldn't see. That's OK. So now we're just going to wait. I couldn't for even to find the back. spear on my screen. There it is. It's kind of nice. Like, if you're just circling Falk here, uh, she'll kill the ads for you. 
soon as she goes down, we'll be done with this boss. Very nice. Even though she had that one recall, that was still a pretty good fight. Yeah, that last phase was kind of sad. I, I didn't know. Was there a sphere on the ground for me to get? I couldn't see. I it. couldn't tell because the effects of it kind of make the the Discord stream a little yeah. wonky for me. But I thought it was still, but she must have called it back like almost immediately. All right, time is coming and up in like three seconds. As soon as I hit the yes, and that's time. Sorry, that was kind of... <laughs> yeah, we, I, we forgot GG. a little bit. But... Yo, thanks. Very nice run. Yeah, not bad. Uh, what time was that? Uh, looks like it was about a 48.50. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. I was really hoping for like a 47, but you know, some of those warps were kind of slow, unfortunately. And we had the uh, two-phase minor. But, you know, still a solid run nonetheless. Better than my PB <laughs> in a marathon run. But that's a different story. Yeah, I do think 48 yeah. in a marathon is definitely good. Yeah. But yeah, so every time you do it, you get the, the memory ending. And that's what we're I'm sorry, at but right I just here. don't remember. <laughs> yeah, the memory ending where she doesn't yeah. remember. <laughs> These endings are pretty short, so I'm just running through it really quick. Um, yeah. I'm glad this run went well, and there was no soft locks. Falcon actually soft locked there. She can go up into the top left corner. She's in the dark. You can't hit her. Or you can hit her, but she goes down, and then you can't actually hit her with a spear. So that sucks. Um, and then you got to restart. All right. Uh, if you have any shout outs you'd like to give, definitely feel free to do so. And if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitch, I want to start streaming again. You'll find me at light underscore Ning. That's L I T E underscore N I N G. Um, I'm on Twitter, light underscore Z. If you want to just like follow that for updates in general. Um, shout out to the community. We have a Discord on our speedrun.com page if you want to check us out. The speedrun is honestly very easy to learn. It's kind of difficult to master. So it's one of those that's like uh, a great like stepping stone to other speedruns that you might find too difficult. Um, and people yeah, on the low Discord skill entry really required, high, high skill at the top, like usual, you know? Yeah. And yeah, how about you, RJ? Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for letting me commentate the run. It's been cool. I am one of the mods for speedrun, so if you ever wanted to look out, look up or anything, you could reach out to me, RJ Smang it, uh, on Twitch, Twitter, wherever. Uh, but yeah, like Light said, follow, join the Discord if you're interested. It's one of the one of the friendliest Discords for speedrunning that I've ever been a part of. Everybody is super willing to help. There's tons of resources and tech explanations in there. So if you're interested, come on in and say hello. You will be welcomed with open arms. All right. Thank you both very much for the run. It was a fun time with a beautiful game. And I do want to say thank you once again for being here. Thank you yeah, for no having problem. us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And we have plenty more runs for all of you tonight. So don't you go anywhere. We're going to be right back very quick. So don't go anywhere.